So that is it for the 2019 French Grand Prix weekend. And today's race was not a great one, but there were certainly some topics of interest. And we're going to go through them now in this race review of the 2019 French Grand Prix. But before we get into the teams, let's first get into what is for now the provisional results of the race. So winning the race dominantly is Lewis Hamilton from Valtteri Bottas second, Charles Leclerc third, Max Verstappen fourth, Sebastian Vettel fifth, Carlos Sainz is sixth, Ricardo for now is P7 from Raikkonen, Hulkenberg and Norris and then finishing the race but not scoring any points is Gasly, Perez, Stroll, Kvyat, Albon, Giovinazzi, Magnussen, Kubitz and Russell and your only retirement is Roman Grosjean. Just want to add that if Daniel Ricciardo, after this video has been uploaded, has got a penalty, then please do remember that. And I'll make sure to post in the comments also saying that this video was uploaded before any penalty was given. But let's go to Mercedes first, who, unsurprisingly, dominated this race. The only, I guess, small surprise is that Lewis Hamilton was so dominant out in front. I thought Hamilton would win today, but I didn't think he would be 18 seconds clear at the end of the race. I thought it'd be more, say, five or six seconds, like it was back at the Spanish Grand Prix. But Lewis Hamilton today, you have to say, was the driver of the day, was setting lap record after lap record out in the lead. And it looks as though his sixth world championship is becoming increasingly likely. Valtteri Bottas second. At the end of the race, Valtteri was actually lucky finishing P2 because Charles Leclerc was right on his gearbox at the very end. And if there was a couple more laps, you never know, Charles Leclerc could have finished in P2. Uh, for Bottas, in terms of the result, it was good, but his pace was really poor compared to Hamilton. Again, he isn't as good as Lewis Hamilton, but he should not be that far off in lap time considering how Valtteri has been so far this season. But for the team, of course, another great result. And they continue their 100% win record in 2019. Next up is, of course, Ferrari. In terms of the result today, considering where Ferrari started from, I think Ferrari had a good result today, P3 and P5. Let's start off with the man on screen, Sebastian Vettel. Did well getting past uh, Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz in the McLarens, but then because he was held up, was too far behind Max Verstappen to really do anything and ended up finishing in a clear P5. At least, though, he did get the fastest lap point at the very end of the race. For Charles Leclerc, good race. Again, if there was more laps, he could have finished in P2. And I think this weekend, he definitely has showed improvement compared to how he was earlier in the season and hopefully he can in terms of his pace perform like this on a consistent basis because we know he can if you just look at Bahrain and pace wise from Baku he is a very quick driver when he wants to be uh, but for Ferrari again considering where they started from good result and going into Austria if Ferrari can as I think they will have a car that can go for pole and the race win then maybe Charles Leclerc, who I just talked about, can get his first win of his career. But of course, it will be very difficult to beat those silver arrows. Next up is Red Bull. Max Verstappen again doing the best he can. P4. Nothing really happened in his race, so the might as well not talk about him. But, you know, good result anyway. Pierre Gasly, though, again, very, very poor. P11, outside of the points. I knew he wouldn't finish in the points because he's been so poor this weekend. And this season has been also so poor in that Red Bull. Now, after qualifying, you could argue that Gasly finished behind the McLarens and Vettel because the Red Bull wasn't quite quick enough. And that's true. Verstappen only just beat Norris in qualifying, but... In the race today, considering how quick Verstappen was compared to the midfield, I'm sorry, Pierre Gasly has no excuses whatsoever. No excuses. And he has clearly showed today, and really this weekend, that he is not ready for a top drive and should not be in a Red Bull. And he shouldn't be, honestly, within a mile of that Red Bull. He's not good enough at all. And they've got to get rid of him pretty soon because... 
he he is costing them points they could be red bull outscoring ferrari in the constructors at times but they can't because they've got pierre gasly in that car doing so so poorly but for red bull with verstappen best they could do but obviously gasly not good enough now let's get into the midfield renault renault in terms of the result at the moment uh a good result p7 and p9 I think Renault, if they started a bit higher in qualifying or, you know, for the race from qualifying, I think Renault probably could have done even better than this because their race pace was actually quite good. Daniel Ricciardo, despite uh, going off the track at the very end to pass Lando Norris, I thought had a good race getting past Gasly when he did and maintaining ahead of drivers like Kimi Raikkonen and his teammate Nico Hülkenberg also. I think Hulkenberg did well to get past Gasly in the overcut and at the moment and it looks as though he will finish ahead of Lando Norris so I think good race for Renault a good points haul and I think they should be happy with what they've come away with if that's the result they do come away with P7 and P9 then that is a good result going forward into the next race in Austria where I think Renault again will be very very quick next up is mclaren now except for lando norris's hydraulic issue at the very end of the race which is why he finished down in p10 for now mclaren in terms of pace were very very good yes they weren't on red bull's level with max verstappen but that was to be expected at the end of the day yes they were great in qualifying but they're not expected to be in the top five in a race on pure pace so I think McLaren did very well today in terms of the pace of their car. Carlos Sainz, very good at the front of the midfield. People need to praise this guy more because he's been so good this season. Norris as well was very good and was very unfortunate at the end to have his issue. Um, but that's just the way it is sometimes. But for McLaren, I think a good race. And they definitely are now showing massive progress compared to how they've been in the last three or four years and hopefully they can continue this going into austria because if they can i think mclaren absolutely can finish p4 in the constructors at the end of this season next up is alfa romeo big shout out to kimi raikkonen great drive to get to p8 and it could be at the end of the day p7 great great drive and i think was today one of the best drivers on the grid and continues to show why still at the age of 39 why he is still for me one of the tip, uh, top six or seven best drivers on the grid he absolutely is and he really showed that today p8 for now but could be p7 in the end i have to say though antonio giovanazzi very very poor now i know he started on the soft tires and that compound was not a good compound to start on clearly proven by antonio's pace in the first stint as he was falling back behind ricardo and then raikkonen and hulkenberg but his pace after he pitted for the first time was so so bad he should have had enough pace to get back into the midfield with drivers like perez stroll kvyat alban but he was nowhere near them and i'm afraid he undid the great work that he you know did in qualifying he was great in qualifying p10 on the grid but he undid that today so not good for giovanazzi but for alpha they are more so back to how they should be considering how they were at the start of this season next up is haas haas this has to be their worst race of their of their history they were so bad this weekend in the race they had the worst car in the midfield by an absolute country mile. They might as well have retired both cars because they were so, so poor and so far off other cars and drivers. And going forward, I think Haas are really in for a rough end to this season. If I was Haas, I would start planning for what they're going to do for 2020 and that car because 2019 is not going to go down as a good season at all because that car on race day is abysmal to drive and it's clear to see that when you watch the car on track awful awful day for haas f1 uh toro rosso next up 
I'm kind of disappointed with Toro Rosso. I think Danny Kvyat did well to finish P14, but Albon, I think, was a bit disappointing today. He did have a poor start and went down to P16 from P11 on the grid, which, of course, is not good, and that did affect his race massively, but he didn't really show any pace to get back into or near the points. So, disappointing race for Toro Rosso. I thought they would be scoring points today with Alexander Albon, but they weren't good enough. And going into Austria, hopefully they can produce some kind of better pace and better performance. But considering how the Honda Power Unit is performing right now, I'm not sure that will be a good race for this team and that engine manufacturer right now. And the final team in the midfield, of course, Racing Point, P12 and P13. I think, considering the pace of the car, the drivers did well. I think the team did well to finish where they did. But if this team could just improve what they do in qualifying, then they could be in the points on a regular basis. But it's not going to happen right now because their car is really not good enough to be in the points with teams like Renault, McLaren. And at the moment, you have to say Alfa Romeo based on this race today. So Racing Point did... You know, they did well, but the car just isn't really there for them right now. And of course, Williams finished at the very back. But guys, that is it for the 2019 French Grand Prix week, uh, weekend. Hopefully you can join us for Austria in a week's time where I'll be doing the same content again. Watch alongs and reviews for qualifying the race and also watch along for practice. Also, it's been a great weekend for the channel. Thank you guys so, so much. And until Austria... I'll see you guys then.